the active management that goes into Kirtland Warblers is, is something that is a story that needs to be told because it's something that needs to keep happening. So today we're working on a Kirtland Warbler planting project. This is an area that's been designated as a Kirtland Warbler management zone. And today we're planting some young habitat for these birds. We have volunteers out here today planting some of the jack pine. The jack pine seedlings are two years old. Um, uh, we space them about four feet apart. This is a volunteer day, but also an education day where we can bring people out to plant on the acre of jack pine. Um, back behind me here, uh, they're young jack pine that in the next five, ten years will be good habitat for the endangered Kirtland warbler. Uh, they'll be up here in mid-May or so. They migrate up from the Bahamas. Right now, they're about 2,000 singing males, which is great. Uh, they've come back from the brink of extinction, and we're facing the possibility of taking them off of the endangered species list. So projects like these are great because we get more habitat, but we also have the opportunity to educate people about what's happening with the Kirtland Warbler. Yeah, the Kirtland Warbler right now is working through the process of potentially delisting. It's a long process, and it's it's kind of in the beginning stages of that, but that's what the idea is to get the bird delisted. And there's, there's been agreements made with the Fish and Wildlife Service, the Forest Service, and the DNR to be able to continue to put this habitat in for the foreseeable future. This bird is a conservation-reliant species, and this would be the first conservation-reliant species that is actually taken off the endangered species list. So that, uh, it's, it's kind of a big deal. And we promise to continue to put in warbler habitat and control cowbirds to make sure that these uh, the warblers have uh, successful nesting. We do need to build that broad base of support so that management programs and understanding and um, involvement continues with jack pine management for um, all of the range of uses that happen out here. And so events like today um, and partnerships like we're showcasing here today are really, really important to building that foundation. Um, um, you know, getting people out here and getting their hands on a jack pine and getting it in the ground. I mean, we planted 1,400 of the, what, 300,000 that'll go in the ground, but, you know, that's a big, that's a big deal for folks to come out and, and experience that, and then you can talk about it, and it's that word of mouth. I uh, am a birder myself, so I, uh, I really have a passion for birds, and specifically the Kirtland's Warbler, because, I mean, it's Michigan's little jewel that we really only have in our, in our state. There's a real close connection between Kirtland's Warbler and the river, the jack pine, the sand. A lot of people think of the watershed as being what touches the river and uh, this is kind of a fun project because it's away from the river but it's really tied to the river. The Sava River is what it is because of the, the geology here in the sand. Other species that move in, there's uh, badger, snowshoe hare, use them, white-tailed deer. Turkeys actually use them a lot in the spring, especially these open areas. They'll take their poults through and they'll pick for bugs and pick grasses and sedges out of these areas. Um, a lot of, a variety of wildlife actually use them. Another uh, bird, an upland sandpiper, uses these areas quite frequently when they're opened up like this. They like vast open areas uh, and they're a very common sight out here typically. Write your legislator, call your legislator, because you can be a voice for this, because now you know what needs to happen, you know why it happens, and what it does, not just for warblers, but for other wildlife, for timber sales, uh, for the economy, for tourism. It's all connected, uh, but it needs advocates for it. And so I'm just here to just encourage you guys to connect in that process, whether it's, a, it's at the agency level or at the legislative level, when you hear about things that would affect Kirtland warbler habitat and other uh, conservation reliant species, you know, make sure that you speak up and engage in that process. The trees planted during this event were provided through a partnership between Fairmount Minerals and the nonprofit organization Saving Birds Through Habitat. This relationship underscores the important ways that the conservation and business sectors can come together to support the protection of natural resources. Volunteer and community supported events like the Planning Day provide an opportunity for a variety of people to learn and experience how collaboration has been key to the recovery of the Kirtland's warbler and critical to protecting the species into the future. We thank all of our partners partners and volunteers for choosing to support and learn more about the importance of Jack Pine Forest and the Kirtland's Warbler to Michigan. Visit www.kirtlandswarbler.org to learn more about how you can help grow this conservation success story.